Hello, Sushi here with another game uh, between me and Father Puki I2. Uh, so after the previous game where this opponent just completely smashed <laughs> my Petrov defense, um, I clicked on his account, I found that he violated Lee Chess Terms of Service. So at this point I knew he was cheating and a lot of the signs were very obvious. I wanted to play this guy again. <laughs> like I. To be honest, I didn't really suspect him, even after the last Petrov game. Um, after reviewing it and looking at the time management, yeah, it was it was pretty obvious, but uh, I thought a lot of the moves were natural. There weren't like weird computer moves that game. Uh, <laughs> this game, on the other hand, um, pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah, so I, I knew he was cheating, so I did notice a lot of the... Um, a lot of the time weird time quirks so this is 12 plus 3 so whatever the time goes down by um, you add three to three seconds to that and that's the amount of time my point used okay um, the time usage is a little messed so four seconds he, he spent seven seconds on you know completely standard <laughs> Sicilian stuff spends another eight seconds you know completely standard dragon stuff You know, after playing this move, you spend uh, you spend eight seconds <laughs> putting the bishop here. After playing this move, like it's it's getting to be a little bit <laughs> ridiculous. Uh, so anyway, the opening that I opt to play is a um, it's a bishop e two version of the grand prix attack. Uh, so normally, the in the grand prix attack, this knight comes over here, and this bishop goes either here or here. To kind of like suicide itself, but I, I wanted to try this. Uh, I got like a sample, like one of those chessable sample course thingies um, by, I think it was a Ginger GM, and he had this kind of system. So I kind of looked at a few of the lines, and it seemed pretty cool. Uh, it seemed to have a lot of the kind of venom of the Grand Prix attack, uh, but it's got some other kind of advantages as well, um, which I will kind of like go through. So I castle here, uh, castle, castle, uh, I guess like spending a bit of time, like 8 seconds thinking of castling is kind of okay, uh, <laughs> it's pretty normal. Okay, the, the first 5 moves of the game, spending 8 seconds per move is kind of weird, but spending a bit of time to think here is kind of like, I guess reasonable, because you might be thinking of some sort of pawn move here, uh, do, you, do you take space? Uh, so I think spending some time here is reasonable and kind of a human thing to do. Uh, yeah, so one of the things is that the knight is not here. Uh, I did not move the knight here uh, on turn one. And it allows this kind of like a structure. And uh, the last like three moves, uh, Stockfish was screaming for this move a4. And this move a4, uh, I kind of forgot about this idea. It's... <laughs> completely vital I would say it's like a key move in this in this kind of a system uh, I kind of like mixed up my ideas I knew that this knight had the option of going to a3 with kind of like two destination squares there's this square over here like if I play a4 a5 this knight can jump into this square uh, and it just kind of like camps there forever and then if the knight's unable to go there for whatever reason um, this knight has the option of rerouting to this square, and it can like see some pretty nice squares. Uh, it's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, uh, computer was screaming for this a4 move. I forgot about it, but now I kind of rem remember it. Um, so next time I'm in a game with the human opponent, uh, I'm kind of at this crossroads. What I do because I don't like this move over here because it blocks the bishop, which will eventually be very important. Uh, I'd have to move it to like an awkward square like that, but yeah, I, I need to remember this A4 idea. Yeah, so yeah, and this is the beginning of the end. I, I feel like this is a big mistake. Again, I needed to play A4 and then uh, put the knight here. So the queen attacks here. Uh, I play this horrible move, and actually, like when I looked at the game, uh, Stockfish is saying it's pretty even. It's Black is up by maybe like minus 0.7 or so, something like that. 
but I think this is a really stupid move. It softens up this pawn. Like this whole structure is really stupid. <laughs> uh, I really needed to play queen here to defend. And everything is very solid. Uh, so the reason I didn't, and this is kind of like a blind spot for players at my level, is that um, we kind of like somewhat study openings, but we don't actually, I don't know how to say it, we don't quite understand what we're doing. Uh, so a lot of the times we study these moves like, oh, so I kind of like, what I know about the Grand Prix attack, the queen swings over to this side. Uh, this bishop goes over here, knight goes over here. So I was kind of like, because I'm playing the Grand Prix attack, in my kind of like, the position in my head that I studied, I'm supposed to swing the queen over here. So I was kind of married to this idea. But when you're playing openings, you can't play the, you know, you can't play the position that you wish that you had. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you have to play the actual position. And I wasn't playing this position. I was playing the dream scenario I had in my head which is queen here, here. But in this scenario, something went really wrong with my opening uh, because I didn't play this a4 idea. Something went wrong and I can't play my fantasy, <laughs> my dream my dream opening. I, I can't just blindly go for my system moves. I have to play this position. And this position would have been to defend with, with, um, with queen c2. And here you could already see why a4 is such a good move because had a4, knight a3 been pl played, I could have actually blocked the pawn with a knight move like that to, to block the vision of the queen. Uh, so that would have been a much better way to go. But instead, I, I kind of like weaken my position like this. Uh, here, I think this is correct. Um, this is unpleasant because there's a move like this later on. Uh, but I think everything's correct. Uh, opponent jumps in here. I do not want to trade this dark square bishop. Uh, I mean, I do want to trade it, but I want to trade it for this bishop. I don't want to trade it for the knight. Because this bishop, I mean, it is blocked in, but... I feel like there are breaks. Like, something like this to break out, break the pawns up. Uh, this bishop will kind of have a role later on. Uh, it, always, it always does in these Sicilian positions. So yeah, I, I don't want to trade the bishop off, so I... I, p I bounce back. Yeah, and here goes this move. And I thought I was in a tough position here. Um, so here takes, I, th I feel like taking is the only play. Uh, I think Stockfish want to take first, but I don't see a difference with what I did in uh, booting the knight and then taking. I don't really see the difference. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah, again, I'm married to this idea of swinging the queen over. Uh, I think I saw an opportunity of pushing the pawn and attacking, but obviously at this point I knew who I was playing against. Like it wasn't going to work, but uh, it's kind of what I would have played against a human opponent. Yeah, so here, like my pieces are just kind of tangled up. Like they're not in terrible spots. I mean, it, they're in pretty bad spots, but not like completely losing spots. But everything is just kind of like getting tangled up. And here I play this knight a3 idea with the intention to bounce back here. Uh, and later on, uh, you're going to see why a4 is necessary. Yeah, so this is a nice tactic. Um, if takes, then rook takes. Uh, and computer says that I should have taken it and given up that bishop because this bishop is it's staring into nothingness so it takes takes um, targeting this pawn uh, which is kind of like extremely weak and I don't think I had any way of guarding that pawn so I advanced and here you, you see the the problem with not playing e4 um, had I played a so this kind of like hits this it hits this um, had I played a4, I could have gotten out of this. Um, yeah, so I, I had to throw this move in uh, first. And here I, I lose the knight. I actually, I don't, I don't think I had any way of saving the knight. Um, so you can see if, had I played, had, had the pawn already been here, um, this knight would not have been under fire. 
And this pawn actually would not have been under fire either because my knight would have been here. So yeah, a4 is extremely necessary in this kind of a system. And here I'm down, you know, I'm down a full piece against stockfish. So it's, it's not going to happen. Yeah, so here uh, the, the knight's already guarded. Um, so you just add another layer of protection here. And I don't remember. Oh yeah, I wanted to get out of the pin. Yeah, and this, I I, I needed I I kind of like got pressured so much by this stuff. I did not see this hanging pawn, so I needed to defend over here. Um, yeah, I I needed to defend because here my idea is attack the rook, force it to move. That'll give me time to do stuff. But I kind of like forgot that I can't take the rook because of this pin. Uh, so that, that's kind of like what, what I forgot. Uh, and at this point, um, right, 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 right. Um, takes, not even taking back the pawn, um, setting up this attack. So at this point I had, um, so, so this is very interesting, the time management. Uh, by my opponent who is totally a legitimate human player uh, so I think anyone above like 800 should, should see this tactic where uh, let's say I I don't know I, I do something like this or, or whatever uh, so rook takes uh, the king has no squares to move and no matter what move I play um, the rook can move discovering a check here so if I just play it out, rook takes, um, I don't know, let, let's do something like that. So the rook can move anywhere and it's a check, so I just lose my queen. And I did not see any way to, to save my queen. I don't think there was any way to save my queen. So I was just going to sack um, the queen for two pieces and just kind of lose everything. <laughs> so the time management here is very interesting. So 845. Um, so at this point... Anyone above 700 should see, you know, at the very least, if you don't see the next four or five moves, you should be able to at least see this move pretty quickly. So here my opponent spends, uh, what is it? Six plus three, nine seconds to play this move. Uh, I auto take, <laughs> spends nine, or is it five? I'm gonna four. Yeah, spend seven seconds on, like from this position, spend seven seconds on this move. And here spends another nine seconds on this move. <laughs> yeah, so that entire three move sequence, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm an okay player, like uh, above average or whatever. Um, but I'm not like, a, I'm not stockfish level. I'm not as good as Father Pukey 2. Uh, so the fact that... From this position, I saw the next three moves. Like, I could have played the next three moves in three seconds. Like, this entire sequence I saw from that position. And I could have played that in three seconds. And it was all forced. There was nothing to think about. So, time management was very interesting. So, here... Uh, so, it's a free... Yeah, things get, like, really out of hand here. <laughs> like, it's already completely winning by, by black. But instead of taking the free, uh, the free bishop, plays the better move. And this is, I think, like made in five, whereas taking would have been like made in seven or something like that. So that's why taking the free piece is a terrible move. And that bringing the knight in is, is much better. Yeah, and I didn't really see anything like check. What could I have done? So I just kind of like made a random move. Yeah, and that, that that's checkmate. And there was no defense against that. Yeah, so <laughs> knight over here. <laughs> and and how long how long did that take? So eight seconds. Yeah, the, the time management in this game was just extremely extremely interesting. And this point, uh spent a lot of time thinking here because he was like typing typing stuff to me. So yeah, and <laughs> after the game I was still kinda like playing dumb. I was like, oh like why is Lee Chess mad at you? Like, it says, it, 
you know, it says uh, this account violated terms of service. Like, why are they mad at you? Like, I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, so um, this game was uh, actually like the pet shop game was pretty fun, but this game was so painful. But uh, I did learn something in, after reviewing this, so I think it is good <laughs> in a sense that he was so blatantly cheating. Uh, because ha had it, had the cheating not been so blatant, I might not have reviewed this game. And yeah, th this A4 move is definitely going to be in my radar uh, later down the line. V very useful move. So yeah, uh, GG's to Stockfish. Uh, I'd like to say always a pleasure, but always not a pleasure playing you. But yeah, GG. Well played.